Okay, I want to talk about the NBA draft real quick. Just run down the picks. Uh, I actually did watch the draft this year, something I don't usually get the opportunity to do. Um, let's start at the top. Washington took John Wall. Everybody knew it was going to happen. You know, I like it. Looking at that team now, they got a great backcourt. Wall and Arenas need to figure out how they're going to play together, but, you know, I'm sure it's going to happen. And, you know, hopefully Andre Blotch will get healthy in time for the regular season. And, you know, that's a decent core. They got a good backcourt. They need to assemble a good front court. But, you know, it's all cool. And that was absolutely the pick they had to make. And I think he's going to be a great pro. Uh, number two, Philadelphia. I like this one a lot as well. Uh, Evan Turner. He's listed as a shooting guard. To me, he's a small forward who can play point guard. Um, so he can really play three positions. He's got good size for any of those positions, particularly the guards. Um, very versatile. A Grant Hill type to me. That's the best comparison you can make in your prime Grant Hill. Uh, seems like a good guy. Great pick. I, I understand that a lot of people thought you got to take the big man at this spot. But, you know, I... I I just think this gives them some flexibility in dealing with Iguodala, and it gives them some flexibility at the point guard spot because Evan Turner can handle point guard responsibilities quite a bit. Uh, number three, New Jersey. Hope they don't trade Derek Favors to me. He is the perfect big man to play across from Brooke Lopez. I know they are thinking about moving him, and I understand they weren't crazy at that number three spot, but to me, Derek Favors is exactly what they need to play next to uh, Lopez and I like that pick a lot as well to me he was the ideal need for them uh, number four Minnesota Wesley Johnson um, I don't know he's a little too old for me you know he's 23 already I'm concerned about that um, you know he can do quite a few different things I'm not saying he's gonna be a bad player but to me I would have tried to trade this pick, maybe pick up some extra stuff, or trade up. To me, Wesley Johnson at number four isn't very appealing. He's a good player, but he's not going to get much better than he is right now. Uh, number five, Sacramento, DeMarcus Cousins. Um, you know, I, I like his talent. I like the talent that the Sacramento team is assembling as a whole. I think there are a lot of positives there. But, you know, I if I'm a player in the NBA, I don't want to play with Tyreek Evans and DeMarcus Cousins on the same team. I don't see those guys as being fun to play with, and I don't see them being very fun to deal with. So, <clears throat> you know, in the future, if this team stays together, we're going to see several times a season how good those two guys can be. And the rest of the season, we're going to remember why nobody wants to play with these guys, because... It's just hard to deal with it when you have players like that. But they are very big. They are very potentially dominant. I like um, the talent, at least. But I'm a little concerned about the fact that you now have two players that are potentially problematic. Uh, number six, Golden State. Ekpe Udo. A uh, little bit of a reach. But, you know, I'm all for getting big men for Golden State. They obviously need it. They need to uh, re... re reformat that whole team and getting a legitimate shot blocker to play you know a guy who can play across from Bedrews or Bedrines, Andres Bedrines or whatever his name is I like it now you can roll out there with the uh, backcourt of Ellis um, who, who was the oh Curry Udo Biendrins and whatever they have at small forward Radmanovich or whatever that may end up being I like that you know, I can go for that. Uh, Detroit, Greg Monroe, like it a lot. They need size badly, and I do like him. So maybe he'll move to center. Maybe he'll stay power forward. I I think this was a nice pick. I know Detroit wanted to trade up to try and get Cousins, but it didn't play out to me. This was a great selection either way. Um, number eight, the Clippers. Are Farak Amenu, Amenu. Like it. Nice, solid pick. Uh, exactly what you would want around this point in this draft. Um, small forward, maybe a little bit of power forward. You know, hopefully he'll work with a guy like Blake Griffin, Chris Kamen. You know, that's a talented team they're starting to assemble in L.A. 
Uh, and to me, this was one hole at you know small forward that they needed to address, and hopefully they did because I I, I think he's good. Uh, number nine, Utah, Gordon Hayward. I I don't know about this one. To me, this says that maybe they're going to get rid of Kirilenko, and if so, I get it, you know. But at the same time, you know, with their big men depth, I I can't help but look at this and say. You know, they're going to be really thin on the front line, so now you're dealing with possibly Boozer leaving, so now your big men are Paul Millsap and Mehmet Okur, and those guys aren't going to be able to stop a guy like Pau Gasol or um, uh, Dwight Howard. It, it's just not going to happen, so it, it's okay, but they should have tried to do something to get a big man. Number 10, Indiana. Gordon Hayward off the board. Paul George. <clears throat> I don't get it, you know. I look at him and I see Danny Granger. The thing is, the Pacers, they already have Danny Granger. So it's a big risk. You know, he's got a lot of potential. But even if he does realize that potential, what are they going to do? Are they going to move Granger to power forward full time? Are they going to move Paul George to shooting guard? I'm not sure how they're going to deal with that. So, to me, that's the problem. Uh, New Orleans, they traded this one to OKC. Cole Aldrich, 6'10 center. A little short for my taste. It's a little small for a center, but he can play. He'll contribute. So, you know, I'm, I'm into that. But... You know, obviously they couldn't keep him because they're already paying all that money to Okafor. And I, I kind of like what the what OKC did to get him, but my concern with them now would be that they're very small up front. They already have an undersized power forward in Jeff Green. Now they have an undersized center in Cole Aldrich, and I, I'm, I'm not feeling that. And uh, also, the uh, Hornets unloaded Mo Peterson in this trade, who was pretty much a corpse out there, so you know I, I like the sound of that. Uh, Memphis, Xavier Henry. Um, solid. If Rudy Gay leaves this offseason, he can help replace that. Um, if O.J. Mayo leaves in a couple years, which I kind of suspect he will, he can help replace that as well. So they're kind of preparing for a guy like Rudy Gay uh, to depart. And if that's the case, then it works. I like it. Uh, 13, Toronto, Ed Davis. Well... Bosch, I think, is leaving. I think it's safe to say Chris Bosch is going. So, I like it. If Bosch, by some miracle, stays, then it becomes a little bit of a waste. But, you know, I think Bosch is gone. So, you got to take the power forward. Got to get somebody next to Bar Bargnani who can defend. And I think this was the best they could have done. So, I like it. Houston, uh, Patrick Patterson. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, I like it. You know, he's going to back up Scola, and really all all that Houston wanted out of this pick probably was a backup power forward to replace Carl Landry, who they traded away, and that's probably exactly what they got. Patrick Patterson is going to be a good rotation player and backup in this league, and um, that's exactly what Houston needs because they already have Scola. Uh, Milwaukee, they got this pick from Chicago because Chicago was not interested in um, keeping a pick that would cost them money that they need to save. Uh, Larry Sanders, uh, power forward. You know, I'm looking at that Milwaukee lineup. You know, they got Jennings. They might have Michael Red. They got Maggetti, CDR, Bogut. So they needed a power forward. And I think they got him. I don't know how great he is, but he's big. He's uh, got some skills. So, you know, it's a good need pick. We'll see how well it works out. Uh, Minnesota took uh, Luke Babbitt, number 16, another small forward, but um, they traded it to um, Portland, and I thought that was a great trade for Portland, actually. i got to give props to Kevin Pritchard going out with a smile on his face. So uh, I thought Minnesota was right to trade him away, but I don't think they got a lot for him. And I say that because Minnesota had already taken their small forward. Okay, that's the first 16 picks. I'm going to go ahead and stop right there.
because the rest of it is just a crapshoot, but that's my thoughts.